let's uh, go to our memory words for, for for this week. The first two songs that we sang were directly from Psalm, seeking the Lord, setting the Lord right before us. And this too is a verse from Psalm, Psalm chapter 16, verse 8. And typically what we do is we read it together, those who have memorized, memorized from our heart. Because this is actually a song of David, before we can clearly say these words line by line, I would like to all of you to draw your attention to this verse. This verse is David's verse. And when this verse says, I have set the Lord always before me, before we meditate on this verse together, let's read, David has set the Lord always before him. So let's read it together. And uh, later again, he, he is at my right hand, David shall not be moved. Let's read that right now. Psalm 16, verse 8. David hath set the Lord always before him. Because he is at his right hand, he shall not be moved. Don't you think this verse, as we read David's, put David in there, it sounds a little odd. There's no meaning to us, per se. But for this verse to have that meaning into my life, I should be able to sing along with David. I have set the Lord before me. I have seeked my Lord throughout the day. Throughout my helplessness, I have seen on my right hand is God ever present in all my troubles. I often remember what Brother Sentel shared a long time ago. He put a chair on his right side as he was attending an interview. And I have that picture in my mind always. I'm helpless. In my helpless dependence, I always cry out and call to God. David, forgive me for saying this, but in the eyes of the world, David was a very unlucky, unlucky man. He was young among all his brothers. He was never selected in the army. All his brothers were. He lost his campus selection. And then he goes in the wilderness with the sheep. He was helpless. He was, in, he was all alone in the, in the valley. But God used that beautiful moments of his helplessness. And God found him. He found God in all his struggles. Imagine if David was not in that position that he was. If Imagine if David was not unlucky. The whole chapter psalm might be empty in our Bibles. We will not have those songs to sing. But thank God for such people whom God takes in the eyes of the world unlucky. But in the eyes of God, his own special desire. You and me, we have gathered together because of that one reason, because we have sought the Lord. However, in order for this words to become our song throughout the day, that world brings a lot of distractions. Today morning I meditated on the story of Egypt. When Moses wanted to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, and Moses was bringing the message of deliverance to his people. Pharaoh, very tricky taskmaster, I would say, wanted to give all Israelites a promotion. Well, I'm using the word promotion, but if you see, that's the kind of promotion we see in our world. All this while, they were only making bricks. But that time, the taskmaster wanted them to also make the straws. It sounds very attractive. They found me very capable of making the bricks. Now let me divide my attention to make straws as well. Why did Pharaoh do that? Why was that promotion there? So these Israelites will be distanced from the true liberty that can only be found from God. And I ask myself, am I making straws? The straws are to strengthen the bricks. But those bricks are used to build Egypt or Babylon. Am I making straws? Lord, help me not make those strengthening straws there for Babylon, but help me to make the straws for Jerusalem. Strengthen my church, my local body. And this verse, let's read it together. God can help us as we set him before us. Throughout the day, we will become the strengthening piece and parcel for our church to build Jerusalem within our own homes. We are not building 
Babylon in empires in our homes. We are not building Babylon in, in San Jose. We are building Jerusalem in our, in our homes. We are not building our little ones to become taskmasters, but to be humble servants of Jesus who might be unlucky in the eyes of the world, but in the eyes of God, beloved. Let's read this verse. Now, let it be our song and throughout the year, let that be true in our lives. End of the year, ask ourselves, what did we seek before us? Was it digital distraction, stealing away the joy from our lives? Or was it purely God's word that strengthened us, equipped us, building the body of Christ? Let's read it again. Psalm 16, 8, just like this, it becomes a song. I have set the Lord continually before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I will not be moved. This is God's promise to us. If I keep God as my right hand man. You know who's the right hand man? I always reach out for help. If a doctor walks with me, all of you know that this guy is probably in a bad shape. A doctor has to always walk with him. And that is the truth. I'm in a bad shape. I'm constantly in need of help. And I need God. The world doesn't. They are capable. But I need God on my side. And when the world sees this guy is always reaching out to God, yes, that is true. It's in my helplessness. And because God is with me, the power of darkness does not rule in my home. And those darkness, power of darkness will not shake my home. Why? Because as Jesus told Peter, you are the rock. And upon that rock, I'll build my church. And the power of darkness will not shake you. Only because Jesus is on my right hand. God will help us, each and every one of us this year. Let's ask ourselves at the end of the day, each and every day, who was before me? Was it the Egyptian Pharaoh, the Babylonian taskmaster, the empires? God will help us. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, I want to quickly share uh, a small testimony which, uh, through which God has been uh, blessing me over the weeks. Uh, it's about how um, obedience to God's word can bring tremendous joy and usefulness to the kingdom of God. Uh, early, this, uh, early last month, Brother Zach was preaching a message in RLCF um, about um, of God's word is like a torchlight uh, where it shows uh, progressively as we obey. It just uh, helps us to go step by step. Uh, this message was a very blessing for me. And in this message, Brother Zach mentioned uh, uh, when he was young, um, he stole a stamp from his cousin and how God convicted him and uh, to get forgiveness from his cousin and how that small sin was a huge hindrance uh, uh, for, for spiritual growth. I have a very similar situation in my life. And when I was in my sixth or seventh grade, I used to collect stamps. And uh, I used to trade stamps with my friends. In one situation, I um, gave some fake stamps to my friend and got a valuable and genuine ones from him. Uh, my friend later on found out that uh, these are fake stamps. So he came to me and said, uh, what you did is not right. And um, I did not, uh, we had a big quarrel and I did not give his stamps back. I kept it back uh, to me. And after hearing this message, God convicted me to speak to this person, put things right. Uh, on that day, I just, uh, uh, after a lot of uh, uh, putting self-will to death, it's been more than 15 years, the last time I spoke to him, uh, it was during my high school day. So that day I tried to find him on the social media and I found him, I called him and he picked the phone. It was a very timely blessing uh, for my friend, uh, uh, for the call was a very timely blessing. He was going through a very difficult situation in his life. A uh, few of his um, family members, both on his side and his in-laws side, have passed away recently. And he was like so hurting because his uh, wife is going through a very serious medical condition. And uh, and he told me like, we, I had a very difficult conversation with my wife. I came out of the house and I'm sitting in the steps. I don't know why I picked your call. <laughs> and uh, And I just offered, God to him. I told him God is a loving father. He is right there with you when you are hurting and, uh, and Jesus is also weeping there. 
he wept with uh, Martha and Maria when Lazarus was dead. And when Martha and Maria was weeping, Jesus was weeping there with, uh, with, uh, with them. So why don't you reach out to God? And he told me, uh, he's from Catholic uh, faith. And he told me, I lost faith in God long back. And uh, I told him the very reason why I called you is because God told me to go and reconcile with you for what I did when I was in sixth grade with you. Uh, end of that conversation, he said, uh, I take this as a miracle. It is a miracle to me that I take this as a God reaching out to me to help me in my, my situation. It was such a blessing and um, my heart was full of joy and uh, I had a deep burden for him to pray for him. And I think I will be the most happiest person uh, to see this friend walking in Jesus Christ. Um, uh, the immediate verse that come to my mind uh, with all this situation is John, 4, uh, John 12, 24. These are the words of Jesus. Uh, let me read John 12, 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The one who loves his life loses it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. Though dying uh, to self, uh, self-will is painful and very difficult, um, the pain is only momentary compared to what joy that God um, promises us. God, God is promising uh, eternal life, joy for eternal life. On a closing note, I want to share um, uh, our memory verse, Psalm 16, 8. I have set... Uh, the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken because God is at my right hand dying to my self will is not going to be a, a shaky thing dying to my self will is going to be easy because he is going to help me to die to my self will and walk in the footsteps of Jesus Amen